So you want to know about cricket? Great. It's an excellent sport enjoyed by billions of people all over the world. And the rules are not at all confusing. Just kidding. They're pretty confused. Does Morton get back down this end before Chandapur can turn and get back? He beats him back. Chandapur is out. Who's touched the bat first? Who touched have no the fear. Bat first? We're in this together and we'll have you knowledgeably sipping tea and spectating at Lords in no time. Okay, so first of all, let's get one thing out of the way. Despite the shared batting of pitch balls and affinity for standing around in fields of grass, the sport has very little in common with baseball. Sorry to disappoint, Americans. Still though, we use America's pastime as the starting reference point for convenience sake. Because well, it's awesome and the two do have some things in common. In baseball, the game is played within the confines of boundaries that determine whether a hit ball is fair or foul. But those don't exist in cricket. Instead, the entirety of the field is in play. A cricket field is made up of a large grass oval with a 66 foot long playing area, or pitch, in the middle. Applied to baseball, this setup would have made Carlton Fisk's home run a lot less memorable. No dramatic waving declaring the ball fair at all. Set up on both ends of the pitch, the part in the middle, are what are known as wickets. Wickets are made up of three wooden poles called stumps, which are hammered into the ground and connected on top by two horizontal wooden pieces called bales. Among other things, the wickets are the bowlers, think pitchers, target, but we'll talk more about wickets later. Cricket teams are made up of 11 players. All 11 play the field and all 11 bat, most of the time. While cricket has innings, technically, they're very different from the sets of nine innings that most Americans are used to watching. In most types of cricket matches, the type you're most likely to catch on TV at least, the teams bat only once. That's it, two innings, one time through the batting order each, for all the marbles. But there's a catch, pun intended. Two batters are essentially up at any given time. And each batter, or batsman in cricketese, continues to hit until they're out. How do batsmen get out? Good question. There are a few different ways. First, if the bowler, again, the pitcher, is able to knock down either a stump or bail on a bold ball. That is very good. The batter's strike zone is anywhere within their reach. If the ball is pitched beyond the batter's reach or behind the batter, in his natural stance at the wicket, then the pitch is deemed wide think like a ball in baseball, and the batting side is given an extra run. This ensures the fielding team bowls towards the batter and is not just chucking the ball in his general direction in order to get through the set number of overs. We'll explain overs in a minute. Second, a batsman is out if a hit ball is caught in the air by the opposing team. The third way a hitting batsman can get out is where that second batsman comes into play and where cricket gets exciting. While one batter, the striking batsman, is being bowled to, the other batter, the non-striking batsman, stands by the wicket on the opposite side of the pitch. Each time the ball is put into play, or hit, both batsmen run to the opposite side of the pitch as many times as possible. Each time they both do so successfully, it's a run. If the fielding team is able to throw the ball at the wicket, knocking down a stump or bale, or if it's thrown into the wicket keeper or bowler, who then does the same, before that batsman makes it back to the end the ball was thrown to, then he is out. Now yes, that all sounds very technical, but it essentially boils down to throwing a ball at a stick to get a guy out. Oh, ball clean. Hit him, Matt. Oh, it's out! Yeah. And, as we said up top, this game is exciting. There are even home runs and grand slams. If the striking batsman really puts a charge into the ball, sending it past the outer boundaries of the oval in the air, it's called a six, good for six automatic runs. If the ball hits the ground before bouncing over the barrier, it's a four, which, you guessed it, is good for four runs. Right this run scoring continues through the striking team's batting order, with the field of play flipping and the bowler changing after six bold balls. In cricket terms, that batch of six is called an over. In most one-day matches, a cap of 50 overs is placed on each team, meaning essentially an upper limit of 300 bowls per inning. When a team hits that cap, no matter where they are in their batting order or with their run total, that inning is closed. In addition to reaching the set limit of overs, an inning can also end with 10 of the team's 11 batsmen eventually being retired. And the game will end if the second striking team scores enough runs to reach or beat the first team's score. The second team is essentially chasing the first team's score their entire inning. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is cricket. You now know enough to take in all the cricketing action your heart desires without feeling like a complete novice. Pretty cool, right? Put a break yes? Off. No? Well, hopefully that's an affirmative. But if this is all still too confusing for you, just remember, there's always baseball. A simple game that hinges on a human umpire's arbitrary, often inexplicable calls. The throw, and they got him! No! He called him An archaic set of unspoken rules and traditions. And he's got too much pine tar, and... And somehow, 
even more nuance and room for interpretation than its distant British cousin. Dominguez has a run down going on. Much easier to follow. Out that way. What an unusual way to turn two.